Jim or Tins. I got the handle just like Jim or Tins. Don't know Rihanna came up off the fence. With the 27th pick in the 2001 NBA draft, the Grizzlies select Jamal Tinsley. Jamal Tinsley, born February 28, 1978. Today's feature has to be the most requested feature currently on the channel, and I'll be honest, I couldn't understand why. So I dove into his numbers as an amateur and pro and didn't see why a story would be needed on him. But numbers do lie. In fact, the best numbers lie the most. When you buy those new Air Jordans for $190, do you think you're getting that amount of value? A good business always manipulates the numbers to lie to you so well, you walk off actually feeling you've won the negotiation. In basketball, things like how well you pace a game, how consistently you find the hot hand or even a cold hand needing a jump start are small nuances about the game that aren't highlighted as stats as yet that show the real value of a player like Jamal Tinsley. Before the game suddenly became the fast-paced breakneck speed game, and long before it became Splash World, the slowed down floor general point guard that specialized in directing was still very much in play. This is where Jamal Tinsley shined. The words coach on the floor best describes him because it always seemed he never looked to the sidelines but always called the right plays, especially in college. If you had a system, let Jamal Tinsley run it. He gained a lot of momentum at Iowa State, and I even think it was a little too much. Regardless, he was supposed to have turned out to be one of the game's greats, as so many have said, or at least one of the best NBA point guards of his generation. Here's why he never came close to those things in the league and how his growth was stunning. Salute to everyone that's requested him. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Quick reminder, if you want exclusive content like workout videos, ad-free features before they release here, and more, head over to the Patreon page now and become a supporter of pushing these stories and efforts to help any young hooper not have their growth stunted. It's something I wish I had, but didn't, so is my offering to you. Appreciate you guys. Please drop a like and comment on this video, and let me know who I should do next. Enjoy the video. There's no way we can tell the Jamal Tinsley story of how his growth was stunted without mentioning how it was actually spurted way before that. Tinsley is the poster child for the guy who was never supposed to make it. He's listed at 6'3", but there's no way he's that tall. So it's not like height was on his side. He was a below average point guard as far as speed and leaping ability and he never played high school ball or graduated because he simply chose not to go. In those days, there was a certain route to the league and Tinsley was definitely not on the right path. That all turned around after acquiring his GED and heading to Mount San Jacinto Community College in California. In his first two seasons, he was the conference MVP and the team's career leader in steals and assists. He then transferred to Iowa State and became an immediate star as a junior. At this point, his momentum is gaining fast as he, along with Marcus Pfizer and Michael Nurse, led the team to a 32-5 record after a 15-15 season before Jamal got there. He averaged 11 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds, along with 2.6 steals. Word on the streets was that he should have been getting the hype Mateen Cleaves got, and some believe he could have left after that year and be a top 5 draft pick. He didn't and wasn't. Stunt number one, he couldn't stay out them streets. Analyzing a player like Jamal Tinsley, who I liked growing up, and who I still think, had it not been for the overhyping of him, he had a solid career. But because of the hype and interest in him, we have to talk about one of the biggest reasons he didn't live up to them in the eyes of the ones that expected him to. He just couldn't leave the streets. And I'm not just talking about hanging out on the block, being physically present, even though it's reported he was in Indiana, 
but the mindset you carry when being from the streets that affect the way you carry yourself forever, especially when you meet like-minded people. The people you gravitate to and vice versa being from the streets. His environment in Indiana turned out to not be the best for his career. He was constantly involved in what we'll call situations early in his career in Indiana, and because of his learned behavior from his environment as a youth, he made poor decisions that caused him to not always be consistent or in the best shape to perform at his best like right on YouTube suggests, and concerned more with having a good time instead of wanting to be the best point guard. When his environment was negative before college, he chose not to attend high school and became a dropout, which could have nailed his coffin in itself in those days. When he got to college and far away from New York City, his game took off. He went to Iowa State and had no problems, actually starting every game as a junior and senior and averaged 32 minutes a game. By the end of his senior season in Ames, he was the Conference Player of the Year and second team All-American after taking his squad to the Elite Eight the year prior. He averaged 14 points and 6 assists and shot pretty well from 3 that year. He was drafted by the Pacers in the first round, 27th overall, to an Indiana situation that was very much bad examples for Tinsley as he fit right in with Al Harrington, Jermaine O'Neal, and Ron Artest, who showed Tinsley a life he was all too used to off the court, and it led to him being involved in multiple shootings at nightclubs and arrest in his span with Indiana. He was also involved in the infamous Malice at the Palace that, while not suspended, his environment led to that team losing out on their best chance at winning a ring due to suspensions and players leaving thereafter. His mentality, along with being in that Pacers environment so soon in his pro career, made him resort to a life he tried to escape that held him back from the focus he needed to be the player many thought he could be. Stunt number two, a consistent jump shot. Piggybacking off what Deron Marshall and Jay and Dad Hill said, him not having a consistent knockdown jumper also hurt Tinsley throughout his career and caused him not to develop into the point guard he could have. He was a great ball handler that I can't remember anyone being able to stay in front of or rip his dribble one on one. Deceptively quick hands and the right mix of playground moves that he used to live in the lane and put pressure on defenses. An attribute you can contribute to his legendary street ball background being from New York City. Handle is great, but to those that possess that feature in your bag, remember that your handle really is only as good as your jump shot on a level like the NBA. Teams play the same player numerous times a year and over and over during the course of seasons and these are the best coaches and schemers of the game. Eventually, they will figure you out if you have such a glaring deficiency like a lack of consistent shooting. As a driver, Tinsley could have opened the lane for himself a lot more and score a lot more during his career if he was a more consistent threat from outside. Believe it or not, as good a passer he was, a more consistent jumper could have made him an even better passer with the open floor and what being a good shooter creates. He shot 29% for his career from three, and in his first seven seasons in the league, only shot 30% or more three times. Stunt number three, body breakdown. Another stunt in Jamal Tinsley's growth was his body not being as healthy as it needed to be, which led to multiple injuries that caused him a lot of time on the floor and didn't allow him to grow as expected. The reason these small injuries continue to happen could be because of a few things mentioned earlier, like him not being as serious or focused enough on basketball instead of other things and kept his body conditioned and recovered for competition. Tinsley only played 11 seasons in the league and in that span he only played 80 games once and at least 70 just three times. A bruised left foot saw him play just 40 games in 0405, which is arguably his best season and the season of the brawl. 
In 2007-2008, his final with the team, he played just 39 games but averaged a career-high 8.4 assists. The Pacers informed him after that season that he would not play for them again, mainly because of his behavioral issues and purposely held on to him instead of trading him or waiving him so his value would go down. He sat out the entire 0809 season. He was eventually bought out, signed with Memphis, but dropped from the roster for allegedly more of the conduct issues he built his reputation on. But by then, he was already a shell of himself and ended his career with Utah in 2014 after three seasons playing 37, 66, and 8 games. All in all, Jamal Tinsley, like mentioned, still had a great journey and literal rags to riches story that could have been even better had he conducted himself better no matter the environment and developed aspects of his game like discipline and a better jumper. Overall, a well-respected player, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.